this project, it's called the Asian American Studies Project. In the MTRSP project, I am working with Joshua Leonard, Bridget Scriteri, and Niara Johnson. They are the core group, but we are also joined by Annie Ho and Amanda Lopez, where we're interviewing people, doing research, and at the end of it, we're going to do this documentary of the collective voices from three decades that CUNY and Brooklyn College have not listened to. Why isn't there an Asian American Studies program in Brooklyn College? When I hear the word Asian, I think about um, I think about discrimination. In this past year, um, when I hear the term Asian, um, you know, there are so many like negative connotations tied to the word. Um, so. I'm reluctant to speak because there's like pain associated with the word Asian. What also comes to mind is kind of like all the stuff that's been happening um, recently with, um, you know, like the Asian hate. Just walking outside, it's kind of uh, exhausting having these thoughts of, oh, am I going to be perceived this way? Are people going to sort of discriminate on that basis? Are they going to assault me even? So when um, the murders happened in Georgia in March, a lot of the country was surprised. It wasn't surprising for people who know no Asian American history and know the history of scapegoating. People at Brooklyn College were surprised. And that's because we don't have the curriculum. And that really shook the community. I mean, I know it definitely shook me. I, I was very upset by it. It was very traumatic. I, I have no words for it. It was just a very traumatic time. Earlier this year, there was a Zoom call for all Asian American staff, faculty, administration, students, alumni, to talk about what happened with the Atlanta spa shootings. I want to apologize up front for having to leave early. There is nothing that could take me away from this event tonight, except that I have a second COVID vaccine shot scheduled for this evening. So I will stay as long as I can for this very important event. I ap applaud President Anderson's campaign against hate, but it has to be a lot more than thwarting off hate. We have to also move in a positive direction and develop greater programs. Around that time at Hunter, because we have an Asian American Studies program, and every week we would have check-ins from the department. It would be as simple as an email. And I think that really felt, really made a lot of us feel safer and feel as if we weren't alone. And there were others who understood that we were going through an internal crisis. Every week we still get these emails. Again, I think that really helped us feel as if, one, our voices matter, you know, and also yet just not feeling as if we're alone and that this is something that's not being paid attention to because it was. There wasn't really interest in Tell Georgia. What, it took a shooting for them to want to even respond to our pain? Brooklyn College, it doesn't, in my opinion, celebrate diversity as much as other colleges do. The struggle for full-time faculty to teach courses in Asian American studies is not a new phenomenon. It's ongoing. Ten years ago, we had a special task force uh, group to build Asian American program in Brooklyn College. The Asian American task force started around beyond 2004, 2005. At the time, President Kimmich, and then uh, under at that time, Provost Matthews had created this Asian American task force for us to guide her and give her advice on what kind of courses are available, what can we develop on our campus to be competitive on a national level. So we starting, uh, we started to share our opinion and then we also delivered our voice to those uh, administrators. But then not many like administrators was, uh, were interested in uh, Asian American Study program. A second time that we created this task force and it continued until 2013 was to re revisit this whole concept. We met with the provost at the time and said, hey, Asian American population has nearly doubled. The world has changed. It's 10 years or six years since the last time we met. There's a greater demand, there's a greater need, and we provided concrete plans 
We provided concrete budgets. We provided a very simple layout of what we wanted. With all the efforts and all the meetings and all the documentation, nothing happened. That's why I said we discussed, but we didn't maybe uh, we didn't have enough uh, enough like strong voice to convince administrator or maybe uh, maybe president, maybe provost. Asian American uh, Faculty and Staff Association started as a third win opportunity to formalize the Asian American faculty on campus and the staff on campus, politically speaking. President Anderson said she was not interested in meeting individual faculty. There was no task force, it was defunct. So the only way to formalize and meet with her, to be able to address her at the table, was to form a legal entity like AFSA. It's almost like the, the administration is setting the goalpost, we supply what they need, the goalpost moves, and the rules of the game changes. What we discovered, or what we're discovering, doing all the research that we've been doing, interviewing people, was that it's not just 25 years, it's longer than that. When I hear the word Asian, I think of an ethnic group, I think of a culture. It's my identity, I feel level. Yeah, I feel, I feel belonging. Asians are different from each other. Chinese are different from Japanese, they're different from Korea. From you, you, you think we are, the, uh, we are the same, but from us, we're totally different. So I think of Asian American as a political identity, as a, an identity that has a very specific kind of American history to it, and as an identity that reflects a certain kind of American racism. But at the same time, I think there's value in uh, a collective identity because there's, there's power in collectivity too. Asia is a huge continent. So many countries that span um, different skin colors, different religions, different everything. It's just a continent, first of all. So the fact that you guys don't offer anything for a whole continent is the only thing that comes to my mind is that you're not prioritizing us then. When I hear the word Asian, I think, unfortunately, I think East Asian and not necessarily South Asian. South Asian, so countries like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, we have an extremely large diaspora community here in especially New York City. I think one of the ways that Asian Americans often get treated is that like there's not this whole long history and presence in the United States. It's always assumed that people have just like arrived on the boat. So nobody think Asian Americans are American. They think it's just alien, used to be alien. Nowadays, just maybe immigrant. The Asian American experience is one that sincerely has been undermined, undermined, one that has been trivialized over and over again. My my people, Asian people, deserve more love, definitely. And I've shown that we're not, you know, disease spreading people, whatever. That's just extremely uh, non-factual. Once you understand different types of ethnic group, you will, you will, once you understand is you will like them. The better we know each other, the better we understand the better we can, you know, create a more peaceful and a safe country. We continue to live in silos without being aware of each other's experience. A program will break that down. We're people of culture, of identity, you know, we're not just some small niche community, you know, we're just regular people that just happen to, to look different from different part of the world originally. From a long history, uh, Asian American group has largely primarily invisible. But as, as a little kid, I always thought, where is you know, I want to be, you know, inclusive. Like, where, where is my people's part? Where is our part? We're lucky that Brooklyn College has class has classes like that for some demographics. But I think we need. It's time that we expand it. A good liberal education that you're going to get in the 21st century of the United States has to understand and prioritize questions around race and ethnicity, and that absolutely cannot be done without including an Asian American Studies program on our campus. Our students aren't being served. They don't know their history, not just our Asian American students, our other students, right? Like, how do we fully know U.S. history if we don't know about certain segments of our population? We're doing everyone a disservice, no matter their race or ethnicity, by not having a program. The students are being cheated in an education. And I, I do have students ask that have asked about our Asian studies minor, which is rather defunct. Due to lack of funding, administrative support, lack of an office, lack of advisement, lack of any kind of infrastructure, we couldn't provide and sustain the minor. And it 
basically fell into the cracks and everyone forgot about it. I feel like if I were to ever have seen like it being advertised like in the college, you know, like I would 110% like go for it. Well, I went to, you know, grad school at Michigan like 20 years ago and there was Asian American studies there. But then it was like kind of crazy when I get to Brooklyn College, just that there's nothing. I have no clue why there is no Asian American Studies department here at Brooklyn College. I think partly it's because students, um, even though they have asked, there hasn't been interest in the administration. The first thing that comes to mind is that they're not prioritizing us. I guess, I guess it wasn't deemed as, you know, quote as important for them to have something like this. With my experience on student government, I've seen that funding was a roadblock for quite a few things. One of the things that um, universities are interested in is, you know, what, whether it's a good investment. I feel that at Brooklyn College, you know, students of diverse backgrounds are just more of a statistic. We don't really have our spaces or, you know, we, we aren't really regarded as much as we could be. We, we don't have faculty or resources. You, you don't see a lot of Asian American faculty and staff in Brooklyn College. You have to hire people in order to teach certain courses. You have to hire enough people to make a program or even more to make a department. I mean, I think we need to be hiring people whose specialty is, you know, is Asian American studies because there's like a whole bunch of people out there. We, we don't have any and we haven't concertedly hired, like we haven't put out calls, right, that are looking for Asian American ex or we haven't had those calls approved, I guess. You know, the President Anderson gave a nice email about the violence against Asian Americans when they were being um, ha harassed and uh, hassled in on New York City streets. but. That's part of the problem. Why can, can we not move forward with developing plans, developing programs that we know would solve the problem? When it comes to making posters about inclusivity and like, yeah, we're a great campus. Like we bring everyone from all over. But when it comes to like uh, the Asian American student life here, like our, the curriculum that we might take, yeah, they don't care. Like we did not get priority in that at all. I think that if Brooklyn College added these sort of programs, it would have a profound impact. Having an Asian American Studies uh, program at Brooklyn College means that that is a metaphor for um, the existence of an Asian or Asian American identity. Because when you're constantly being gaslit, that your experiences don't matter, that, oh, you're, um, it's not like what you're going through is so painful at all. You know, you don't die when you're walking down the street. Pretty much fed up and then kind of at the end of his rope and, um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him and this is what he did. It means that there is value in, in my life. It's no doubt it will have a very positive and, and a big impact. We need to help our students better understand and interconnect with each other, to be self-empowered, um, to know where you're coming from or to know where others are coming from. It took me a while to feel empowered, to say yes to things or to say no to things and to ask for things. When I realized that no one is going to ask for me, that's when I started to think, I should ask the question. So I did ask the question, uh, where is the Asian American Studies program at Brooklyn College? We all want to be seen in this world. And sometimes part of our process of, of asking people to see us is for us to be able to see ourselves. It's important for academia to set these precedents of learning about his, the history of a certain diaspora or learning about the struggles that they have to go through. Brooklyn College can make an excellent example to pioneer, prioritize a strong program in Asian American studies. Classes around our identities. I've seen how people are affected by these classes. Yeah, and it's just, it just feels very like backward given like the incredible diversity that is Brooklyn College. You cannot walk into any room here and not see an Asian. The fact 
of the matter, I mean, if we look at numbers, we do have 23% Asian American students. That's huge, right? That's not a small, that's not a small figure. I think it's more of a philosophical question about how we organize sure. knowledge at the university than it is a demographic question about how many people come from that background um, in their student body. If there were not a single Asian American student on campus, I still think that there's value in having an Asian American studies program on campus. And then another level, it would be the content, the specific, you know, the research, the, the knowledge that can be generated from this program. So after you learn, for example, a specific Chinese, uh, the Asian culture or Asian language, you can get a high paid job. They will be able to create more opportunities, financial opportunities, social opportunities, political opportunities when they have their more self-empowered. So for example, if I were to learn a little bit more history about who we are, like as a South Asians, um, maybe I would want to like join the UN one day and I could speak for us. Think about the programming that, could, that we, we could bring, you know, all the speakers that we could tie to um, programs. I mean, there, I, the possibilities are quite vast. An official program is, needs to be very competitive. I would love to see a um, cross-section of the Asian diaspora in the Caribbean. Like Jamaican students, tell us about like their Chinese grandmas, for example. If it was like a general, general studies, I'd love to hear about as much as I, as I can, like almost like um, as much they can cram in. I'd love to hear all of it. I think a good Asian American studies program is not one that's just based in trying to explain the Asian American or even give an Asian American version of history, but it's one in which it connects with all of the different ways of people coming together in, the, in this country in, on multiple levels. It's one thing when you keep seeing Asian Americans recently, maybe in the last 20 years, but it's another thing to know that they existed from the very beginning, you know, that they're in the fabric of American society. Yeah, that we actually contribute a lot and we did a lot for this country. I feel like they see us, but they don't actually prioritize when it comes to actually being serious about what we might want as well. If the administration was here and I was speaking to them, I would say treat us equally. I think I would just feel like it's about damn time. I feel like most of us feel very proud of like being from here or like representing this college or, or New York City in general. So it kind of hurts that like your own people won't give you like what you need as well then. I just wish that people cared more about us. Um, I wish that Brooklyn College cared more. Does my existence matter to you? Does the existence of other Asian Americans matter to you. I definitely feel that CUNY and Brooklyn College ought to take a stronger, um, a stronger stance on racism. I would say, like, quit playing. <laughs> I think I would like show them what's going on in the world and kind of tell them like why it's important. I mean, I think now more than ever, considering what is like currently the cultural and political climate of things, I think it's like more important than ever to kind of have like those opportunities for people to learn more about like the Asian American experience. And like, honestly, if they can't understand it, like, why are you even in a position of that type of power? It's time for the administration to walk the walk not just talk the talk. And if they're not willing, then maybe they should think about going somewhere else. I, I hope this time is, is, is true and it's really, it will happen. Like, I feel like change is still possible. Yeah, it's definitely a process and it's definitely possible.